when I, when I first got elected, I, I tried to understand uh, what was most important to my district. And, you know, it is a challenge to represent this district because uh, it, it, there, there really are so many different varied interests uh, with all of the different sectors. Because you go from uh, the rural landscape of Poolsville to the bustle of Germantown that if incorporated would be the second largest city in the state of Maryland. Uh, then you go to Clarksburg where you've got this burgeoning area that has so many different challenges and then you've got an old established community like Olney. Uh, and then you've got Montgomery Village that's very unique in the sense that it represents affordable housing. Uh, so it's, it's just very interesting in seeing um, in a place like Montgomery County uh, having a carve out like our agricultural reserve. And it really does represent a lot of what I uh, have seen in uh, middle states America. So it's, um, it, 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 it's really interesting and, and um, it, it, it requires you to put on various hats as you go through the different areas of the district. My mother's from rural South Carolina and my dad's from Hampton, Virginia and uh, they both got married and moved here uh, before they had me and so they moved to Lay Hill Village right off of Lay Hill Road. My father instilled so many things to where how I hold myself, how I interact with people is an embodiment of him. So when people talk about how professional I am or how nice or courteous I am, that all comes from him. My mother actually grew up as one of 14 brothers and sisters. They grew up uh, in, in a very rural town uh, in North Carolina. My, my grandparents were actually sharecroppers and then eventually uh, were able to buy that farm. When I talk about my mother and what she did as a teacher and administrator, but then also the way she carries herself in terms of helping uh, other members of the family, um, and that's something that stuck with me. And that's something that I want to continue to pass on to my kids as well, to make sure that they understand that it's great to be successful, but it's even better to be able to give back. My father was in the Marine Corps, fought in Vietnam, and uh, for me, I'd always wanted to do something uh, with the military, so I uh, signed up for Naval ROTC and went off to school at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign and uh, was majoring in aerospace engineering and hoped to be a Navy aviator. It was after my uh, sophomore year that unfortunately my family experienced a tragedy. My aunt and her, uh, her son were killed in a triple murder, and I remember uh, when I was taking uh, my final exams and I was right in the middle, I still had, I think, two exams left and I got a call from my mother and my mother had said, uh, I need you to come home. There's uh, something wrong with Trevor, who's my young cousin. And so I uh, uh, hopped on a plane right away and flew back and that's when I would found out that not only uh, was Trevor killed, but my aunt was killed as well as well as the nurse that took care of him. Trevor had suffered uh, brain damage as a result of a nurse putting in a trach backwards at Children's Hospital. And so um, there was a settlement that was between Children's Hospital and uh, the family. Uh, trust was set up for Trevor. And my Aunt Millie and her husband were actually uh, divorced at the time. And uh, it ended up that he had actually hired a hitman uh, to kill them so that he could get the money. Uh, from the estate. And this was a very big case uh, and one of the first triple murder uh, homicides in Montgomery County. So it was a difficult time for us. Uh, I had actually flown back and never went back to University of Illinois. I didn't feel comfortable in leaving, uh, still not knowing what the result of anything was. So I um, went to Montgomery College, ended up going for two semesters, and then ended up transferring to Howard. Uh, was there for a year. Um, then transferred to University of Maryland, and that's actually where I finished up my degree in computer science. There are many times, and I actually think about what my life would have been like if I had joined the Navy, you know, majored in aerospace engineering, all of those kinds of things, what that would have meant for my family, you know, what would have changed. Um, you know, so, so, so you always think back on those kinds of things and wonder, what if? Um, but you know, my mother's always said that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And I think that um, ultimately it did make us stronger. Uh, when you go through what we experienced, you know, it's, um, 
not something that I would ever wish on anyone, uh, but at the same time, uh, some life-altering experiences uh, really are, uh, you, you can glean beneficial things from them. And that's what you have to do, um, coming together as a family, realizing the importance of fighting for others uh, and protecting those that are vulnerable. Those are things that you take from uh, situations like that. Well, my wife and I met when I was at the University of Maryland. And one of my part-time jobs that I did was nightclub promoter. And so we would do parties at the Ritz nightclub in downtown DC. And uh, I remember I was sitting there on a stool and saw this young lady walk by. I was like, wow, she is really, really beautiful. And she kept going towards the door. So for some reason, uh, I stood up on my, on my bar stool that was sitting there at the front and said, wait, come back, you're my destiny. Now at that point, everybody stopped. <laughs> the whole crowd stopped. People turned around and looked at me like I was a psycho, <laughs> like I was crazy. Uh, she looked back and she looked at me and turned around and left. <laughs> and um, that very next night, that Friday night, we were at a totally different club in a totally different area uh, of DC promoting. And I was walking around the bar this way. And that same woman that I had seen before came walking around the bar this way. And I walked up to her and I said, see, you can't escape your destiny. And, you know, we exchanged numbers and actually went out to the movies uh, that following day. And the rest is kind of history. It's been absolutely phenomenal. You know, we've been married now for 11 years. We got married in 2000. And uh, it's just been a whirlwind. You know, family is so important to me and really gets you through a lot of tough times. I learned that early on. I loved serving in Annapolis, uh, being a member of the General Assembly, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed my time there and thought that I was successful. Sheila Hickson has been uh, an amazing uh, source of uh, information for me when I first came as a freshman I got assigned to Ways and Means and she was my chairwoman and uh, she kind of took me under her wing and showed me the ropes uh, taught me everything not only about uh, how you get things done uh, but also about why it's important to interact with people a certain way um, all of those kinds of things were extremely instrumental to me, and I ended up being very successful as a freshman legislator, even in the House of Delegates, passing a lot of legislation that uh, a lot of people typically don't do in their first few years. It was about April of uh, 2011, uh, or 2010, sorry, uh, when I got a phone call, and it was from Mike Knapp, current county council member representing District 2. And he said, you know, I wanted to sit down and have lunch with you. We were at Rio Grande in uh, Gaithersburg, Washingtonian. And uh, he said, I'm not going to be running for re-election. I almost fell off my chair. <laughs> I said, really? And he said, and I think that you should run for my seat. And I was again floored and said, OK, but I'm happy where I am <laughs> in the state house." You know, at that point, uh, I'd become the point person for Sheila Hickson on Ways and Means uh, and had a very successful time, passed a number of bills, including anti-bullying legislation, uh, College Textbook Affordability Act, all different kinds of things that a lot of freshmen don't get the opportunity to do, I had been able to do as a state legislator. And uh, he said, if you don't run, it's going to be very difficult to find someone who's going to have the experience and who I know I can trust to leave, you know, District 2 in the hands of. And I felt honored. The very last thing that I told uh, Mike at the end, I said, Mike, the last time that I decided to run for office, I really didn't consult with my wife. I kind of told her that I was going to be doing this. I said, you're going to have to meet with my wife. <laughs> and, and so I remember that was a Friday. And so uh, I gave him my wife's cell phone number and told him he's got to call her and set it up with her and so they met that Monday and I was on pins and needles that whole Monday waiting to hear how this meeting went and so when she came back she said uh, I had a chance to talk to Mike and I think this would be good for you 
and I think it would be good for us as a family too. You know, it's great to have a woman that uh, not only believes in you and but supports you in everything that you do. She's just been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I serve on the Education Committee and the Health and Human Services Committee. Uh, very passionate about education issues, so had to make sure I was on that committee. And then when you look at uh, Health and Human Services, uh, that's something that, that for me embodies uh, why I truly got into this. When you talk about helping your fellow man, a lot of the issues that affect our children uh, in our school system don't just uh, happen inside the school walls, but also affect them when they go home. You know, do they have meals to eat? Do they have a safe environment? Uh, do they have activities that are there for them? Uh, all of those kinds of things are encompassed with our Health and Human Services Committee as well. And so I think that it's really nice to be on both of those committees that uh, meld a lot of those issues together. I've got three children. Uh, Alex is my oldest. He's 16. Uh, then I've got Anaya, who's our middle child, and she's uh, nine years old. And then Kaylin, who's our youngest, she's five. Uh, we found out in the fall of 2009 uh, that Alex was my son. Um, I got a letter in the mail. The sheriff had come to the door and said, um, you know, there's a letter of paternity. And so, of course, obviously was very surprised to find out that I had a son. Uh, that had been living here in Silver Spring all this time, you know, um, that I didn't know about. And so it was difficult. But Alex is 16 years old, well before my wife and I even met. So, I mean, there was no scandal or anything like that. And it was just an unfortunate incident, you know, for whatever reason, we weren't united until now. We really wanted to make this a family uh, and to make sure that Alex felt uh, loved, uh, just like Anaya and Kaylin, uh, and included in everything that we do. And so that's the thing that's most important. I try not to look back uh, and think about what I missed uh, and try and look to the future and just think about all the things that are still to come. Opportunity that I had to go to the White House was uh, absolutely phenomenal, and I would rank it up there as life-changing. Um, and the reason why I say that is because uh, I left with a quote uh, from the president uh, that, that will stick with me uh, for the rest of my life. And uh, it really embodies the dedication and the true definition of being a politician. And it's that we don't get elected to be somebody. We get elected to enact change, to do something. And I think that that's extremely important. And that's what I've tried to define my career with. It's about doing something. You know, uh, it's not about uh, the, you know, pomp and circumstance. Uh, it's not about having a VIP badge and being able to go to this reception or that reception. Those things aren't important to me. But what is important is understanding that you can change somebody's life. And those are the things that make this all make all the sacrifice, make all of everything that we do worthwhile. I mean, that's really what this is about. It's what I think ultimately is my calling. Um, I try and live every day uh, focused on what I think is gonna be important to my constituents, and that's always my priority. <laughs>